hope everyone is doing really well and thank you for clicking on the video. Today I will be continuing my little series on nutrition and vitamins and minerals and all that good stuff and last time I talked about carbohydrates and I mentioned the word sugar probably a couple times in that video so today I am going to be talking primarily about sugar itself. Now, everyone has heard that sugar is bad for you, eating large amounts of sugar is bad for you, eating this type of sugar is bad for you, but this type is good, or this type is bad and this type is good. We've all heard it. We've heard there's a big problem with sugar, but what is the real problem with sugar? We all crave sweet things. It's actually in our design as humans to have a sweet tooth. Some people have a stronger sweet tooth than others, but everyone does crave some form of sweetness and sugar. The sugar that is in plants is a great amount. It's almost like the perfect amount of glucose that the human body needs to keep functioning properly and of course to satisfy that natural sweet tooth that we all have. Unfortunately, it is when we process these sugars and take away all the nutrients that we actually cause harm to our bodies. So we've taken something that is naturally and supposed to be really good for us and we've taken the good away and we're left with a product that harms us. See, when you process the sugar and you take away the nutrients, what you're left with, the sugar product or the, the end result that you're left with, when we eat it, because it's not in its natural state and it's been processed, we, it like triggers our brain to crave that thing. And we almost create a sugar addiction for ourselves because we've, we've tasted the forbidden fruit, the bad stuff, and the processed stuff, and now our brain is just like, more, 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 I want more of that. And we kind of forget about, oh, natural sugars, natural sweetness. That, that's good, too. We are so focused on just that, that taste. If you don't get anything out of this video except for one thing, remember that sugar isn't all bad. When sugar is left in its natural plant state, it is an amazing source of nutrients and energy for your body. It's consuming too much of certain types of sweeteners, especially the processed and the concentrated sweeteners. That's the problem. Processed and concentrated sweeteners is what leads to triglyceride levels to spike, which can lead to cardiovascular disease. These concentrated sweeteners cause your blood sugar levels to rise and increase in insulin production and a decrease in insulin resistance, which can lead to a number of health issues such as metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, and type 2 diabetes. Concentrated sugars also, and we all know it, they can cause cavities and other dental health issues. They can cause non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which can lead to our atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. And the last problem with consuming way too much processed and concentrated sweeteners is it affects your immunity and your body's ability to fight off infection. So many products contain these processed and concentrated sweeteners. So how is a person supposed to stay healthy in a world that just seems like it's against healthy eating? The big question that comes to mind is how much sugar is okay? The World Health Organization says that your daily caloric intake should be about a maximum of 10% from added sugars, which is about 53 grams per day if you're on a standard 2,000 calorie diet. Obviously, if you are on a higher uh, caloric intake, then that is going to kind of fluctuate the amount, but that's kind of like a ground rule. So I came across four steps to kind of choosing the healthiest option when you're picking through processed products that may or may not contain sugar. So step one is learn to read your labels. It's against the law for a manufacturer to leave the total amount of sugar off the nutritional label. However, there is no law against having to separate natural sugar and added sugar. So you have to learn to 
kind of dig a little deeper, which leads me to step two, which is learn to dissect the ingredients list. Ingredients are listed in decreasing order of weight. An easy way to think of that is whatever is most in that product is gonna be near the top of the list, and then as it goes down the list, it's gonna be the stuff that is a little bit smaller in amount. So if sugar or the sweetener is near the top of the list, you'll know this has a lot of sugar or added sugar. But if you start to go down the list and they start to separate the sweeteners or the sugars by their names, and there's like a big list of all these sweeteners, just because they are near the bottom of the list and separated by name, if you combine all of that, it could still equi equal to a large amount. So it's very important to really learn the different names of sugars, the different names of natural and like processed sugars, so learn those names and learn where they're placed makes a difference. And that leads me into step three, which is learn the different names for the concentrated processed sugars. There are a lot of different names for processed sugar, but I'm not gonna list them all because that would take all day, but if you just Google like list of concentrated sugars or list of processed sugars, you'll get the list, no problem, but some of the more common ones that I personally probably see on a daily basis and that are probably seen by a lot of other people on a daily basis are things like agave nectar, bolt marley syrup, molasses, blackstrap molasses, honey, high fructose corn syrup is a big one, cane sugar, brown rice syrup, maple syrup, raw sugar, and some of the more kind of obscure ones that people kind of pass over when they're reading ingredients lists are things like dextrin, maltodextrin, and maltose. So that's just a few. Like I said, there's tons more, so definitely if you're interested, go look that up and kind of get acquainted with all the different names because there are quite a few. And the last step to choosing the healthiest product is always take into consideration the serving size. So kind of a good scale to keep in mind is about 12 grams of processed sugar or sugar is equal to about three teaspoons. And then from there, you can kind of do the math and figure out how much exactly is in this product. Most sugars provide about the same amount of calories from type to type, and they contain fructose, glucose, or a combination of both. While glucose does tend to raise your blood sugar levels, it's actually fructose that has the, the more risk factors, health risk factors. Of course, it's always in excess. So eating a little fructose is not going to harm you. If your daily consumption of sugar or processed sugar or sweeteners are, is a large amount of fructose, it actually overwhelms the body and the body's ability to process it. So it's almost like a backup of fructose in your body and your body's like, the gears are like slowly turning because it's a foreign substance and it's not quite sure what to do with it. So it's gonna take a long, long time to process it. And in some, in some forms, it's almost nearly impossible for your body to process it. When consumed, fructose is immediately sent to the liver and the liver converts it into fatty acids. Now, some of those fatty acids are released into the bloodstream as triglycerides and some of those fatty acids stay in the liver. Some negative side effects associated with concentrated sweeteners, especially those that have high amounts of fructose in them, are the following. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, increased LDL cholesterol, insulin resistance, increase in body fat, and high blood pressure. Just a reminder, we are still talking about concentrated sweeteners. And very few of these concentrated sweeteners have its natural nutrients still in it because concentrated sweeteners are basically the nutrients has been taken out and you're just left with the pure sweet sugar element of it. So a lot of these sweeteners, these processed sugars, do not have a whole lot of nutrients left 
in them. The natural sugars, they still have the nutrients. That's where you want to go if you want something sweet and nutritious. The natural plant, the whole plant that is sweet, so like fruit. There are some exceptions to that rule though, the first being blackstrap molasses. Now, this type of molasses actually is abundant in iron, calcium, and potassium. There's actually more calcium in blackstrap molasses than in one cup of milk, more iron in it than an eight ounce piece of steak, and more potassium than two whole bananas. Two other exceptions are coconut sugar and date sugar, but that is only because they are very, very unprocessed. They're still processed, but they're not as processed, and they're still coming straight from a whole plant source. Of course, the most nutritious forms of sugar, like I said, are things like fresh fruit and dried fruit. So that was a whole lot of information about concentrated sweeteners, or as the common folk refer to it as sugar. However, we also know another term, and that is sugar substitutes. Now, there's a lot of controversy behind the su sugar substitute, whether it's healthy, which kinds are healthiest, some have, you know, linked to cancer, and then all of a sudden those same ones no longer cause cancer. So there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of misunderstanding, and a lot of not really knowing what's going on when it comes to sweeteners. Of course, same with sugar. If you're going to eat a sweetener of some kind, the natural form or the natural version is always better. It's the overly processed, concentrated, chemical-filled products that you want to avoid, but that should just be common knowledge. And the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is sugar substitutes. There are two types of sugar substitutes, sugar alcohols and non-caloric sweeteners. In small amounts, sugar alcohols such as mannitol, sorbitol, and xiatol aren't really a big problem. The only thing is they can cause gastrial intestinal problems, but that's really if you just go overboard and eat way too much of that type of sugar substitute. So the second class of sugar substitute is the non-caloric sweeteners. And that category can be divided up into two more categories, natural and artificial. In the United States, there are only five artificial sweeteners approved for human consumption. And those are acesulfame K, aspartame, neotame, saccharin, and sucralose. Natural sweeteners are things like stevia and raw biodicide A, which both come from a plant. It's always a good idea to decrease your use of sugar substitutes, but if you must consume them, it's always a good idea to pick the natural over the artificial. All right, so that was my video on sugar. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, please give this video a like. And for more videos about health and nutrition and diets and eating disorders and all that good stuff, please subscribe to this channel and I will see you next time. Bye.